Happy Friday, frugal people, and today we are taking a look at the Roth IRA and why I personally don't have one. All of my investments are held in a taxable account such as this one with the Robinhood app. Now, I'm sure by now most of you guys have heard of this mythical thing called the Roth IRA, except it's one of the most misunderstood things by people and yet recommended by almost everybody as the number one essential money investment to have in life. So in order to understand why I personally don't have one, let's dive a little deeper. But first, what is a Roth IRA? Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. No, that won't work. <laughs> My name is Andre Jick, and I teach about the magic of finance. Just like that. Sorry guys, uh, this is the best I've got for this video's intro, and uh, please subscribe and hit that like button, otherwise I won't eat this month. Now, originally the plan was called the IRA Plus, and it was proposed by someone who was packing some serious wood, because his name was Bob Packwood. He was a senator from Oregon, and another senator, Senator William Roth of Delaware. Now, the Packwood Roth plan would allow people to invest $2,000 into an account that was taxable up front, but then you would later be able to withdraw that money tax-free in retirement. However, under congressional budget rules, which work within a 10-year window period, the cost of giving everyone that tax break was simply too high. And as a result, that plan was initially limited to only people with very low incomes. And this allowed legislation to meet the 10-year budget rule window. But as a result, economists have warned about exploding future revenue losses associated with Roth IRAs. The government is bringing in more now and sacrificing a lot more in the future, according to economist Leonard Berman, who in a research study for the Tax Policy Center calculated that from the years 2014 to 2046, the US Treasury would lose as much as $14 billion due to IRA related provisions. Is that right? Yep, that's right. So thank you, Wikipedia. Very exciting stuff, but I still don't think that people actually learned what an IRA is. So let me give it a shot. I'm gonna explain it. I promise this is gonna make a lot more sense than that. So here's how I look at it. Think of IRAs like a basket, or better yet, think of them as these two decks of cards. And yes, I did prepare it ahead of time. This is gonna get so good, so listen up. So these are what's known as tax-advantaged accounts. And there's really only two of them. There's your traditional IRA, and there's also your Roth IRA. These boxes themselves are not investments. It's what you put inside the box, and these are just supposed to protect the investor from taxes. So whenever I have somebody ask me, Andre, do you invest? in Roth IRAs? That's incorrect. The correct question is, do you invest within an IRA? That's the correct question. So it's what we put inside. Now this is, let's say for example, my brand new Roth IRA account that I opened. Ooh, it's shiny. Let's put some investments inside of here. We can put all kinds of stocks in here like Disney, for example. We can even put Tesla. We can put Johnson & Johnson into here. Wells Fargo, you name it. You can put as many stocks in here as you want. But you can also put things like Vanguard's VTSMX in here as well, which is a great index fund. You can put a lot of things inside of here. You can even put things like CDs. I promise you can, just not literally inside of this analogy. Otherwise, we can do it magically and just throw it in there. Yep, it's in there, sorcery. And even mutual funds, you can sprinkle that in there as well for your future trust fund baby children you can have for later. You can even do things like bonds. James Bonds, that was stupid. What's a bond? I don't know, maybe, yeah, that'll work. So we'll put that in there as well. And of course, everybody's favorite, you can even load it up with cash, just like this. Ooh, look at that, I just turned a dollar into an origami heart in less than a magical second. Come on, that's pretty good. So you can even throw that in this little box as well. And inside this Roth IRA retirement box is where all of those little investments will grow over time for me to enjoy later in life. And so this box protects me from my thieving Uncle Sam. He sucks, he wants to steal everything from me and my family, and who wouldn't? I love this box, it's a beautiful box. And if you want one for yourself, 
link in the description below. But without getting too into the intricacies, trying to explain the differences between a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA, that's a whole separate video in and of itself. But I'll give you guys a quick comparison of the two using the same analogy. So cardistry. In cardistry, there is a move called the spring. It looks like that. I can make it way bigger. That's what she said, but that's also not the scope of this video. Now, to do this move kind of hurts your hands. So you can do one of two things to help you not hurt your hands so much. Choice number one, you can train your hands to grab stiff decks and do this a lot so that you can do this move easier later in life. That would be your Roth IRA. Or you can go the other route, which is just grab a softer deck of cards and you can do this move almost right away. You'll be able to do it a lot, but then later in life, when you're older, you'll have carpal tunnel. So that's kind of your traditional IRA, and that's the differences between the two. Guys, I just explained the intricacies of two complex financial instruments using a deck of cards. That's pretty good, come on. That's probably the simplest explanation you've ever heard. Show this to a friend who's never seen or doesn't know what a Roth IRA is, I promise it'll help them out. And also click that like button, it'll help me make more of these silly educational money videos and would help out my channel a lot. And also help me eat. So basically what this all means is you can invest now and pay taxes later in life, or you can pay taxes up front right now and then withdraw your money when you're retired tax-free. Now, I don't have my investments in either of these accounts, and that's because they both have their pros and cons, which most people don't really talk about. Now, I do wanna quickly add though, if it means for you in getting a Roth IRA and saving money or not getting a Roth IRA and blowing your money on things you don't need, definitely get that Roth IRA. So here are some of the pros of having a Roth IRA. So the number one most advantageous thing to having one is of course tax-free income in retirement, which is huge, everybody loves that. And the second great thing is, even though your money is locked into this account until you're at least 59 and a half, you can actually withdraw your contributions at any time absolutely tax-free. So for example, this box that we talked about, let's say you put in some stock and it's worth $100 right here, but then it grew to $200. You can actually withdraw that $100 for yourself, but you can't withdraw that growth or the capital appreciation that happens as a result of keeping your investments inside the Roth IRA. But this one, at any time, tax-free. The third advantage is tax diversification. So let's say you're retired and you're collecting all your social security checks and you need to supplement your income. Well, you can withdraw from your Roth IRA to help you boost your income without actually getting you to a higher tax bracket because Roth IRA income is considered non-taxable, so you will not be bumped into a higher tax bracket doing it this way, which is neat. Now, there are some disadvantages to having a Roth IRA, which is why I don't have my major investments in one. So here's reason number one, and that is these are not tax deductible accounts. They are not really something you can write off at the end of the year as an expense and use to lower your tax burden. And I know that's true of my non-IRA retirement account or my dividend account. This is especially important to me because reason number two, even though I can withdraw on my contributions, I cannot use my Roth IRA as collateral when seeking a loan to buy a house. And right now I'm saving quite a bit of money for a down payment on a house in case I find some sweet deal in the real estate market and find that sweet wedge deal that Kevin always talks about. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now. So for me, that's more important to save. Since I'm not making a ton of money, I kind of have to be a little bit more picky and selective where I put it. Otherwise, for sure, I'd do all of this stuff. But if I was more selective, I would rather not have that money locked into an IRA account and instead just kind of save it for a down payment or buy more dividend stocks, which I will actually use that dividend income to pay for my bills in case I need to. And reason number three, because I am a seller self-employed YouTube bum. I don't have access to any kind of 401k employer matching contribution plans. And reason number four 
is really the biggest reason of all. Now, I have this weird philosophy in life, which I think I've shared before, but call me crazy. I don't want to retire when I'm 60. I feel like we live in a time where we're so fortunate to be able to make so much self-sufficient income from things like Uber and Airbnb and Shopify and online businesses and affiliates and Amazon and just on and on in social media. We have so many avenues for making that self-sufficient income that I think Gone are the days where you were able to work 20, 30, 40 years at some corporation to be able to finally retire. I think we're all replaceable, really, and I would rather take my chances doing what I love and failing at that than working a job I don't particularly like until I'm 60 and possibly getting fired for it. Not really my style. But more specifically, as this relates to a Roth IRA, my dividend growth income strategy is already tax advantaged. And that is because I want to retire early. That is somewhere in my 30s, maybe my early 40s. But that's a really young age to retire and I might want to withdraw from my dividend portfolio sooner in life. And having a base of even just like $1,000 a month to pay for my core expenses makes me feel good about that and gives me that chance and the ability to take a risk to continue doing what I actually love, which is to provide value for people and making these silly YouTube videos and teaching people about finance. And this kind of gives me that safety net while still being tax advantaged. That is because if I happen to be in the 12% income tax bracket earning $38,700 or less, I will receive 99.9% .9 of my dividend income tax-free up to $38,600. And if I'm fortunate at that point to be married and I'm good to go, then that could be as much as $77,200 of dividend income tax-free. And that's a pretty freakishly large dividend portfolio, but who knows, maybe I'll have that much, maybe I won't, I have no idea. But to be my own devil's advocate, I would get a Roth IRA if one of two conditions were met. Condition number one, I was employed and my employer would help me set one up and actually match my contributions, or condition number two, I made so much money, I didn't know what to do with it, and I would just invest it for some extra diversification income in retirement. But that is kind of ironic, because if you make $122,000 a year or more, one of the disadvantages is you can no longer contribute to your Roth IRA. So someone like Graham Stephan, for example, who makes more than $122,000 a month cannot contribute to his Roth IRA unless he set up his YouTube business as an LLC or an S Corp and he pays himself a salary as an employee of that business and keeps it under 122K a year, which he's probably doing if he's really smart. So I, of course, would set one up for myself as extra diversification. I'd just throw in an index fund into there like VTSMX and call it my emergency retirement fund for when I'm old. So if I get one, I'll definitely update you guys. But as of right now, I see not much benefit in it for me considering my goals and my time horizon. But for you, I definitely suggest you look into it, especially if you are employed and you plan on staying that way until traditional retirement age. So I'll leave you all with this riddle. What's the difference between a market bond and a magician? Scroll down to the comments section to see the answer to this riddle. Hope to see all your smiling faces on Monday. Love you guys. Hope you learned something and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. a faster car i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else i'm gonna skip my breaks i'm gonna make mistakes try not to hold me down feel alive when i'm in this town look at the beautiful stars i wanna take a trip to mars nothing can break me no no nothing can break me